Well, you'll find the text in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number three. <clears throat> what a blessing it is to be identified with this good place and, uh, and your good pastor. He's God's man and, uh, for this hour. Uh, I wish I could be like him. I, I pattern uh, uh, to try to be somebody that can take the right stand and still have the right spirit. And, uh, and I mean, everybody likes him, you know, <laughs> I mean, takes the right stand and, and still, you know, I mean, people just, how can you be, how can you not like Dr. Treber? And then he pastors such a broad range of nationalities and and origins. I mean, in the South, we're still fighting a civil war, praise <laughs> God. Yankee comes to our church and, you know, we watch them for weeks. <laughs> Usually put a deacon on either side of them and frisk them before they come in the building, praise God. And, uh, our president still Jefferson Davis, amen. <laughs> and, uh, but everybody gets along in harmony here. It's interesting. That's good. Bible said it's a good thing, it's a pleasant thing when we can dwell in unity. And uh, how can we walk together except we'll be agreed? And the purpose of this place brings us together. And I like it. I'm reminded of those that can't get along. As a Jewish pilot who got in the plane one day, he was the pilot and his co-pilot came in and it was a Chinese man. And uh, the Jew just was, it bothered him. And he just looked over at the Chinese, he said, look you here a minute, man. I just want you to know, I don't like Chinese people, period. And that Chinese said, well, why, why, why you don't like Chinese people? He said, man, cause y'all bombed Pearl Harbor, that's why. And uh, that man said, no, 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 that's Japanese people. We, we know, we, we know bomb Pearl Harbor, Japanese people, a Japanese people. And that Jew just said, Japanese, Vietnamese, Chinese, all the same, no difference. Taxied out through there and took off. Got up about 30,000 feet. And that Chinese said, I don't like Jews either. Just want you to know. He said, man, you ain't got no right not to like Jews. We God's chosen people. He said, no, no, no. You sink Titanic. That Jew said, no, that was an iceberg. He said, Goldberg, Steinberg, Feinberg, no difference, no difference. <laughs> hey, it's a difference, praise God. And then I want to communicate to you. Normally when I preach in the foreign soil, like Chicago, Illinois, I, I take an interpreter with me when I go places like that. But I want you to get the message tonight. We're living in perilous times. And uh, we need to get truth. I was reminded of a, of a lady who'd been saved and she was inviting her preacher over for dinner, for supper. Well, actually for lunch after the Sunday morning service. And uh, her boys was rough and her, her husband hadn't been saved yet. Uh, he is a rooster fighter and I mean just rough as a cob cussed every breath and uh, she said now boys y'all come in here and they sat down in the living room and said now this Saturday night said they just got their baths and getting ready for church and now listen in the morning after church the preacher's coming over I said you understand I mean we're not going to have no misbehavior you understand that boys and, and they said yes ma'am said but I'm talking about there ain't going to be no off color talk no cussing and I mean do you understand me boys and they said yes ma'am and they said yeah your daddy is going to whoop you if you, I mean, if you get out of line, your daddy's going to whoop you. Isn't that right, daddy? He said, that's right. So they got there and the preacher came through the door and she had the tables just spread nice. I mean, steam coming off the potatoes, sweat dripping off the side of that sweet tea. Can I get a witness right there? Right there. <laughs> had that roast been in a crock pot all day. Just I'm talking about tender as my heart and had uh, <laughs> potatoes and carrots just sitting there in it. I mean, everything was right. And they asked the blessing the preacher did, and, and his daddy said, Now, Johnny, what do you want? 
And Johnny said, well, I want some of them Blaine potatoes over there. He said, come here, Johnny. Walked outside. I mean, tore him up. And brought him back in. <laughs> she had three sons and said, now, Bobby, what you want? <laughs> he said, well, I want some of them Blaine potatoes. He said, come on, Bobby. Come on back out here. Wore Bobby out. Looked down there and Tommy was sitting in the last chair. He said, Tommy, said, what you want? He said, uh, I know I don't want none of them blame potatoes. <laughs> 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 yeah. He didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> Look at our text tonight. Y'all mind standing? You don't have to stand to reverence God's word. You could listen to the radio and listen to preaching. But it, I'm going to preach about two hours and a half, so you might as well stand. If you can stand, let's stand together. Matthew chapter three. The Bible said in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was uh, locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. That's a that's a baptism of repentance. John's baptism was a baptism of admittance. You know, you got to get lost before you can get saved. I said, you know, you got to get lost. You got to know something about being under conviction before you can get saved. And uh, they were under conviction. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to rise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. While you stand and turn to Matthew 11, just a few pages over. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 7 says, And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in the king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than than he. Our Heavenly Father, we stand in need tonight. We're living in a perilous time. Evil men and seducers have waxed worse. They're deceiving and being deceived. We're living in an hour where it seems the church has lost much discernment. And following the Pied Piper of popular trends and modern day powerless religion. 
And Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that you'd fill me with the Holy Ghost. I yield myself to you. From the top of my head, the sole of my feet is my desire to please you. And the Spirit of the Lord, I pray, God, you'd help me to say everything that I ought to say. Not to be hesitant. Uh, Lord, uh, not to delay, but with authority and power, I pray you'd help me to say everything I ought to say. And then I pray, Spirit of God, that you'd, Lord, guard my mouth from saying the things that would not bring honor and glory. Uh, to exhort the saints of God in these these Laodicean times to press on. Let it be so that when we leave this meeting tonight, it'll be a turning point in the lives of every preacher here, every layman, every, every serious follower of Christ under the sound of my voice, whether it be by the waves of television or, Lord, uh, on the internet. I pray, God Almighty, that you would take this message I believe you've laid on my heart for this hour and etch it in our hearts and minds. And I ask you that long would live the old time way, long live old time religion until you come again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can be seated. Without controversy, these texts indicate the approval of the Lord Jesus Christ on John the Baptist. Amen. John the Baptist uh, was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. The forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the last of the Old Testament prophets steps on the scene with a message of, of borderline uh, mockery to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Judaizers. when he, he points at Jesus and said, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. He said, you can turn your turtle doves loose, you can turn your bullocks loose. You can quit offering those lambs because this, this lamb of God's here. He's fixed to be sacrificed for the sins of the world. He had a revolutionary message. And I'm sure that the hackles went up uh, on the necks of those Pharisees. They didn't like what he had to say. Uh, he's uh, ostracized. He's pressed out. He's not accepted among the mainstream religion of that day. But yet he had a good endorsement. Though not politically correct, though not embraced by, by popular religion, not trends of the day were, were not his fancy, but, but the God of the Bible put his approval on him. At six months of age, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Nobody ever been born like he was born. Mm -mm. Nobody ever been filled with the Holy Ghost at six months of age. I'm talking about leaped in his mother's womb when he heard that Mary was with child with the Messiah. It ain't happened like that since, Hoss. Is everybody all right? Ain't no man that's ever been born of woman that's greater than John the Baptist. He had Christ's approval on his life. I hear it. So-and-so's just been endorsed by so-and-so. I can recall in my ministry uh, early days, I, I, I could think back 26 years ago at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church. We met in a, a house, the very first service, and uh, I guess the first three services, and we were able to secure a rented place. And I remember my daddy walking in the service about the first three or four months of Middle Tennessee Baptist Church history. And we were singing page 310 in the red book, a Glad Reunion Day. I was the only tenor in the choir and I had a bass standing by me. We had about two altos in all Baptist churches. Altos outnumber the soprano. Somebody say amen. <laughs> had two altos and one soprano. And we got to singing, there will be a happy meeting in heaven I know. When we see the many loved ones we've known here below. Gathered in the blessed hilltops. With hearts all aglow, that will be a glad reunion day. And Daddy walked in the back and, and he smiled and he's thumbs up. Man, I mean, I know it didn't happen physically, but my head began to swell. I mean, I was about to levitate right there. I mean, Curtis Hudson just said thumbs up. Wasn't long as the Lord began to bless the ministry at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church and the doors began to open. I, I was plowing a pair of mules one day and my wife hollered and said, Daddy, 
said, come in. I said, Dr. Seitler's on the phone. I said, baby, don't lie to me. You know, hush, hush your mouth. She said, no, I ain't kidding, Daddy. Doc, Dr. Seitler's on the phone. He wants to talk to you. I said, Tracy, if that ain't Dr. Seitler, when I get up there, we're going to have to have marital counsel after this thing's over. <laughs> get ready to call 911, police or ambulance, one or the other. Somebody say, man, don't you lie to me. And she said, I ain't lying, Daddy. I mean it. I said, whoa. I stopped. I left that field, walked across several firs to get up there, walked up the hillside, and I picked up on it. He said, is this Tony? And I said, mm, yes, sir. He said, no, 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 no. this is Al Seidler from Greenville, South Carolina. He said, I want you to preach for me. Man, now, you couldn't tell it. I mean, there wasn't no picture to take, but Man, my head got big. Dr. Malone called me. He said, I want to talk to Tony Hudson. Is this Tony? I said, yes, sir. He said, this is Dr. Tom Malone from Pontiac, Michigan, the Manuel Baptist Church and the Midwestern Baptist College. He said, I want you to speak at our graduation services. And we're going to honor you with a doctor's degree. I thought, Lord, have mercy. I preach against them things. <laughs> I've always said a doctor's degree is like a curl on a hog's tail. It don't make no more ham. <laughs> I've made fun of that stuff. And I, I said, but wait a minute. If Dr. Tom Malone wants to give me one. <laughs> hey, man. Mays Jackson preached. One of his, I guess his last message he preached was at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church. I'll never forget he was changing his shirt. He sweat through his coat and he was changing his shirt in my office. And, and Dr. Treber, this is what he told me. He said, now, Tony, he didn't say it like that. He said, mister, I want you to, he said, Tony, I want you to listen. He said, don't touch the knobs. And I knew what he meant. He liked what he saw. He liked what he heard. What he was doing was endorsing. The man, I mean, when he left, I called four or five people. I said, hey, hey, listen, what doctor? Doc, hey, Brother May said, don't touch your knobs. Don't touch your knobs. Boy, I, I began to sweat. But Dr. Treber called, said, I want you to come preach over here. Man, to have that endorsement. Don't act like you don't want it. You wish you could get a call from Jack Hiles, too. Somebody say, man, I, I remember when I got that one. Man, I'm talking about, are you kidding me? He's going to approve of what I'm doing. He's putting his stamp of approval on what I'm doing. You mean those men want to identify with what I'm trying to do? Man, I'm talking about encouraging the Lord. But more so than Dr. Treber's approval. And much more so than Billy Kelly's approval and Dr. Tom Malone's approval. I want what John the Baptist had. I'm not saying we'll meet the criteria of the greatest man ever born a woman. There's not but one of them. But there was something going on in the ministry of John the Baptist that attracted the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now look, we're not going to be talking about 10 steps to a better self-image and how to feel better tonight. And look at me now. We're dealing with a ministry. I'm so tired of these pampered bunch of Baptists. I always got to be some kind of something for them, some self-help. This thing's not about, listen, by the way, it ain't about your faith. This is not the home age. Look at me, friend. Hey, this is not the home age. Don't bow your head yet. Look at me, I'm not ready to pray. Look, this is not, this is the church age. Everything going on right now is sanctioned under the authority of a local New Testament Baptist church. This ain't the Duggar's age. Somebody help me now. You see what that kind of stuff turns out. This it's, is not the college age. This is not the Christian school age. We're in the church age. Yeah. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. We got too many tails wagging the dog now, friend. Amen. Amen. Something going on down yonder by Jordan that got the Lord Jesus Christ's attention. You say, how do you know? Well, the Bible says in verse 13... On the heels of verse 12, he says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized 
of him. Something going on down yonder in the ministry of John the Baptist. Something going on down yonder in the ministry of John the Baptist that caught the attention of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at me. I know what you say. He's omnipotent. Don't try to fix me tonight. I'm here to help you. Amen. Don't, don't say he already knew everything. I, I realize that. But in the Holy Writ, it was so written that it was looked as though you and I could gain a lesson from the approval of, of John by the appointment of the Lord Jesus Christ and his clear endorsement. Man, don't you want the presence of God at your place? I'm not talking about once in a while. I'm not talking about an occasional manifestation. But I'm talking about when God puts his stamp of approval on your life. God puts a stamp of approval on your family. God puts a stamp of approval on your ministry. Something's happening down there. This is not some length of time. I mean, it goes from verse 12 to verse 13. I believe with all my heart. Now watch me. I believe with all my heart, old John the Baptist is preaching like forked lightning. Hell, fire, and brimstone. He's looked at them Sadducees and said, Hey, Sadducees out of hell. He looked at them Pharisees and said, Hey, false doctrine Pharisees out of hell. He said, Friend, I wanted you to know. Hey, you better bring some meat. You ain't got no works to prove anything. But what you here for anyway? What you doing down here? You ain't come to repent. Hey, he's busting their hide. Amen. This is not some Joel Osteen here at Lakewood. He's calling names. He's identifying a crowd. He specifically, I'm talking about taking a target on the enemies of the gospel. And he says to that crowd, he said, hey, hey. And about the time Jesus shows up. I mean, it's right here. Then came Jesus. I believe he speaks to take a breath and they said, y'all look over yonder. And he changes his message to behold the Lamb of God. Here's what y'all need to see right here. You that's getting baptized for repentance. You that are coming to a point where you realize that Judaism ain't getting it done for you. Here's who can fix it for you. Behold the Lamb of God which taken away the sins of the world. Something going on down there. Jesus said, hey, y'all, I'm going down to Jordan. Why are you going? I'm going there where John is. I'm going to join his church. I'm going to let him baptize me. He didn't need to be baptized. Jesus Christ didn't need to be baptized. But he's wanting to identify. He's wanting to endorse. Notice three things if I can get through with them tonight. I believe every one of us, I think you're here tonight because you want the approval of God. I believe without controversy, it's going to take some things. Number one, notice this. I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ identifies with a ministry of outreach. The Bible says in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. I mean, man, a church that's involved, a ministry that's got people on their mind. I mean, a heart for people. Bible tells us he came, John. I believe most churches today are in the our brand, our stripe, our crowd. They would readily identify with a doctrinal statement. We would all probably concur on a mission, purpose of mission. But wait a minute, what about exercising? It didn't say John was burdened about it. It didn't say John had compassion. But the Bible said in those days came, John. Hey, but we like to put some legs on what we're doing. Hey, but just talking about soul winning and a soul winning class and an and a organized visitation. I mean, what kind of exercise are we involved in? He came. We, we better get serious about it. I, I was told of, of, a, of a young, uh, uh, the days of the, of, the, of the slave trade that a southern lady had a house slave within her home. And, and this lady was a Christian and she had prayed for months on end that a house of ill repute that was across the way from her home would burn down. And she'd pray over and over, Lord, burn it down. This place, they gamble over there. They drink over there. It's wicked. Lord, burn it down. Uh, it's a bad influence on our young people. Lord, burn it down. And one day she asked her slave, Liza, said, Liza said, do you know the Lord? She said, I sure do. Said, would you pray with me that that, that, that house of ill repute, that beer joint would burn down? She said, I sure will. 
And that very evening, they knelt on their knees in the parlor and began to beg God. And old Isaac called out and said, Lord, said, you know it's wicked over there. I said, burn it down, Lord, burn it down. The very next morning, the lady of the house got up and she could smell smoke strong in the house. She thought maybe one of the dampers had closed on the heater, but she walked downstairs and the fire was drawing just fine. And, and she began to look across the street and all she could see was ashes smoldering and smoke coming off of it. She couldn't believe her eyes. She, she ran to her slave and said, Liza, said, said, wait a minute, said, do you see what's happening over there? She said, yes, and we prayed, didn't we? Well, she said, yeah, but I've been praying for years. What made the difference? Liza said, come here, I'll show you. She walked around behind the smokehouse and there's a can of kerosene <laughs> and some strike anywhere matches. She said, she said, ma'am, says, when I pray, I put legs on my prayers. <laughs> Amen. Old John the Baptist wasn't just burdened, friend, but the Bible said he came preaching. There was emotion, there was exercise. The Bible said he came preaching in the wilderness. I believe the outreach of John was an attraction to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wilderness. Now you can look up all you want to because I tried to find it too, but we don't know how far it was. But it was some distance. That's why it's defined wilderness. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. I'm saying the extent of this outreach. Most of us are comfortable. And listen to me now. We're getting very selfish with the gospel. I've never seen such churches I go in. I mean, they're satisfied. Well, I, I got a home school and my kids are saved. I know you didn't say it, but with your mentality, it's like let the rest of the world die and go to hell. Amen. As long as I can betroth one of my kids with another family over here that's like faith and they do, I'll be satisfied. Friend, what about going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? Friend, that, that's, that's the Great Commission. Teaching them to observe all things once I command you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the ends of the earth. We, we, we don't go far enough. We, we, we oftentimes soothe our conscience in the area of evangelism by supporting foreign missions. But just across the street's a public school. They got guns and violence and drugs. We know all about it. Look at me. Hey, what about them? The wilderness. The outcast. The extent of our outreach. I believe with all my heart, Jesus Christ liked it. He said, I like that man. He's out trying to preach it in the wilderness. He's going further than expected. Jesus said, if a man compel you to go with him, I'll go with him two miles, go with him twain. We're, we're satisfied with just making enough. Y'all know I'm telling it right. Some of you preachers hadn't passed out a track since Moby Dick was a minna. And what happens, that lack of energy, that lack of effort, that, that lack of diligence, that lack of deliberate action, what it produces is Calvinism. Or it produces confusion. Where everybody's got to get saved again because you're having no baptism, there's no convert, so you got to talk everybody out of being saved. Don't look down like I lost a quarter. I know what I'm talking about, praise God. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, what is to be will be. Them Calvinists make me sick. Yeah. Sir, if you slipped in here and you're a Calvinist, you, you, look at me. Hey, I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Jesus didn't die for you. <laughs> According to your own doctrine, he said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Yeah. Right. According to your doctrine, you've been saved from the foundations of the world. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't die for you. Somebody help me. That's false doctrine. That's lazy man's religion. I, amen, friend. These Southern Baptists are sucking it up like a Hoover vacuum cleaner. And by the way, I wouldn't rub shoulders with somebody who rubs shoulders with somebody who rubs shoulders with a Southern Baptist. Amen, friend. It's preaching time. You better find out who's doing it too. They may be closer to home than you think they are. Is everybody right? Is everybody okay? Hey, good neighbor. What I'm talking about is the extent of our outreach. Any witness to your neighbors, you work on staff here. I might as well bust y'all's hide. Let's don't worry about the rest of them. I mean, they don't even know who their neighbors are. 
Oh, we're so busy serving the Lord. What about your next door neighbor who's going to look at you one day at the great white throne judgment and say, wait a minute, did, didn't you, what are you doing over there? Did, 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 didn't you used to live, ne- didn't you used to live next to me? Hey, hey, didn't you used to work right by me on the assembly line? Didn't you Monday and hey, come, you'd come in after a good sun, but you never mentioned him? Why didn't you tell me about this? That man, we're so afraid of offending somebody. Where are you going to send them to hell number two? They're already going to hell. Well, I'm just kidding. Papa's and Granny's going to answer for their, for, their, for their lack of extent. No extension and so on. Well, I know I'll tell my miniskirt wearing, tattooed up granddaughter married that, that hippie. But, but you know, every time I mention the Lord, it just gets so tense. It, it just seems like it just ruins the atmosphere every time at Christmas, every time at Thanksgiving. If I bring up the Lord, oh, but my, my Lutheran uh, son-in-law just gets so upset. Well, what about when you're standing on the other side of the bar? Hey, Papa, you wish to God you'd have made them uncomfortable over here. When they look over and say, why, Papa? Why, Granny? Why, Mama? Why, Granny? Why didn't you tell me? Well, I didn't want to make anybody uncomfortable. Well, that's where we are. No, John the Baptist, he wasn't worried about making somebody uncomfortable. The extent of, I believe Jesus Christ is attracted to a church with outreach. The expense of outreach. I could say here, and we could all concur, that it costs bus ministry cost. I heard one jack-legged preacher the other day tell me, well, reason we don't have a bus ministry because there's another church in town that's got a bus ministry. The dude lives in a metropolitan area. I would call his name, but just ain't got liberty yet. Is everybody okay? Are y'all okay? It, liberty may come before this thing's over with. <laughs> Liberty's been known to come. <laughs> Look up here. Well, we just don't have a bus finished because so and so. Are you kidding me? You live in an area with, with, with thousands upon thousands upon thousands? No, it's going to cost you some CDLs. It's going to cost you some mechanical problems. It's going to cost you some insurance. It's going to cost you some tires. It's going to cost you some diesel. I mean, you may have to trim out some of your trips to the, hey, singing at the sea. Look at me, friend. Hey, you may have to take a trip. You may have to trim out. Look at me, neighbor. Hey, some of your trips over here. Hey, to Gothard Homeschool Convention. Look at me, neighbor. It may cost you something. It's preaching time now. A while ago, I had butterflies in my stomach. Now they're flying in formation, praise God. It may cost you something. It may cost you some friendships. It may cost you some family. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace with a sword. Wasn't long ago, one of these larger conferences I used to speak in quite often. <laughs> he asked me, he said, I want you to come preach for us. Close it out like you've been doing it. I said, I'd like to. About five minutes, his brother called me and said, hey, what you going to be preaching on? I said, well, I ain't, you know, they ain't never asked me that before. But I'm going to be preaching, I guess, on the words of Christ. <laughs> about, about 15 minutes later, he called back and said, he wants to know what words. <laughs> I didn't know there's any bad words of Christ to preach. But I would have preached on, I didn't come to bring peace for the sword. A sword divides. A sword defends. A sword defeats. Amen, friend. I'm, I'm talking about as we go to the outreach, Jesus Christ identify. It may cost you some camaraderie. It may, it may cost you a few blue-blooded, high, high-brow, you know, upper crust in your church. You got bus kids running around. You know what the upper crust is anyway? A bunch of crumbs on top. Somebody say amen. amen. Everybody at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church is in the bus ministry. 88-year-old millionaires. Now, they don't drive. They don't visit. They don't ride. But they write checks. Somebody help me. 
Everybody's involved in the outreach. Everybody's involved. We got people in wheelchairs. They don't get to go soul in it. But friend, they're on their knees. And they're putting, I'm talking about sitting up prayers. Hey, I'm to look at me, friend. It's going to cost something. We're wanting something for nothing. We want, we want God's approval that it not cost us anything. John the Baptist was ostracized. Didn't nobody want to hear. I mean, he never got to preach in those synagogues. He never was invited to the conference. Nobody ever liked him. Yeah, man. They didn't, I'm telling you, they didn't all come to this meeting. He's preaching by Jordan. Not all of them came, but their approval, they came, hey, to try to convince him to go another way. Hey, they were over there to try to proselyte his converts. Hey man, had a preacher the other day at a fellowship meeting. He said, now, now brother Tony, y'all an evangelistic church, aren't you? I said, we try to be. He said, well, if y'all win them, he said, we're a, we're a t- deeper life. We teach. He said, if you'll win them, we'll teach them. I said, over my dead body. You win yours and teach yours, we'll win ours. And somebody help me. What are you, what are you willing to spend? Pleasure? I tell you what I'd do, I'd hawk a set of golf clubs to keep me off, if keep me off soul winning. If I spend more time, I'm telling you, friend, you can like this lump. Put this in your pipe and smoke it right here. Hey, I'm telling you, I'd, I'd rearrange my priorities, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Hey, friend, what's the priority in your life? When's the last time you witnessed to a waitress? Well, we just don't have time to go through a thorough explanation. Hey, listen, friend, that's not what she needs to hear. She needs to hear that Jesus died for her. And he was buried and he rose again the third day. You'll be amazed. You start witnessing. You'll be amazed. The spirit and the bride will say, come. You'll be amazed how God will work it out. Not that I've apprehended, not that I've attained, but over and over this year, I've been able to lead people to the Lord. I'm talking about one-on-one and in public places. And when he got the Holy Ghost, y'all ever heard of him? The Holy Ghost worked it all out. I mean, perfectly. You be willing, friend. He'll let you have an outreach. I believe God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, heard about it. He said, man, something's happening down there in Jordan. I, I want to be a part of John's ministry. I, I want to know there ain't nobody like John I, ever been born of woman. I, hey, friend, friend, hey, friend, I want his approval. I want his endorsement. It'll take an outreach. The ministry that Christ endorses is a ministry with an outcry. He came preaching. Notice verse 2, and saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John, I believe with all my heart, Jesus Christ identified and endorsed the ministry of John the Baptist because his outcry was consistent. Inconsistency is the greatest eyesore that fundamentalism has ever had. Amen. In light of a risen Savior, in light of an em- in light of an empty tomb, here's what he said: First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Abounding, going beyond the boundary, exceeding the expectation. Wherefore we labor, Second Corinthians 5, 9, wherefore we labor and whether absent or present that we may be accepted of him. The Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord shall do their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That word wait is not anticipation. That wait is a term of service. If you go to the right waitress, the right, right restaurant, you have a waitress. You go to the right place, you got a waiter. It, it serve you, sir. More tea, sir. They that wait upon the Lord will do their strength. They'll run and not walk and not faint. What about it? Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary and well-doing. 
Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If he sows to the flesh, he'll the flesh reap corruption. If he sows to the spirit, he'll the spirit reap life everlasting. So let us not grow weary in well doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. We quitting too easy, friend. Well, I used to preach against things, but you know it's a different day, and all the Bible's the same. This is a this is immutable an immutable book. It's a steadfast. If forever, O oh Lord, Thy word is settled in heaven. If it's ever been wrong, it's still wrong. This is not a book of it's not a book of situational ethics. This is a book of absolute truths. If it's ever been right, it's still right. I don't care who changes. I, I don't care who dips their colors. I, I don't care who throws in the towel, friend. There ought to be somebody somewhere in your community hey, with leather lungs uh, and high blood pressure uh, foaming at the mouth uh, saying, hey, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Consistency. Leaders I've patterned after through the years. Dipping the colors. Well, thing about Tony and them, they major on the minors. I didn't know there's any minors in the Bible. Doth not nature itself teach it's a shame for a man to have long hair? You better believe I'm going to bust them sissies. <laughs> Effeminate looking long hairs. All day long. You heard about that little boy got saved and... His family got saved, started going to church. Dr. Treber, I got to hurry, Dr. But it ain't as cold as it was last night. Amen. And, and, and boy, he's, he's growing in the Lord. But he had long hair. And his daddy came to him and said, Now, son, you fixed her 16 years old. And if you get that hair cut off, get a nice haircut, listen, I'm going to buy you a car when you turn 16. Just a few weeks before his birthday, man, he kept reading his Bible every night, going to Sunday school, going to church. Man, he started going to the youth activities. They hadn't been saved very long, just about night before his birthday. His daddy went in there and he had his Bible open. He was acting spiritual, but his hair still dangling down. A little effeminate looking, some kind of a Gaither homecoming looking something. <laughs> Straight, a wicked, effeminate something or another. I said effeminate something or another. I said effeminate little old sissy looking something. And his daddy said to him, said, well, well, son, said, your birthday's tomorrow. He said, yes, sir. He said, you bought my car? He said, no, said, you hadn't cut your hair yet. That boy said, well, Jesus had long hair. His daddy said, yeah, he walked everywhere he went too, didn't he? Praise God. <laughs> now, we know he didn't have long hair. Somebody say amen. But that, hey, look, I never see, y'all with me? If it's ever been wrong, I've never seen such a weak, weak preachers in my life. What went you out to see a man in soft raiment? Soft raiment represents effeminacy. You don't have to be, you know, mean as a junkyard dog with age, but it helps. Hey, man, friend, I've never seen such an apologetic pulpit. In my life, and these soft preachers like these soft candidates too. Somebody say amen. Are y'all okay? Little old young preacher, soft as, a, as soft as a mammy, shake their hand like you're shaking the mammy's hand. They think manual labor is a little Mexican boy standing on the corner somewhere. Somebody say amen. Is everybody okay? Look up in here, it's preaching time. Soft. What went you out to see, a little old reed? Shaking in the wind, that's where we, our pulpits are full of little old, little old reeds. But if I say that, it might run somebody off. You'd be amazed. You, hey, you just go ahead and bust high and let it split down the middle. I, we're in our eighth church split, and I'm enjoying it more than I have with the previous seven, praise God. Every time 40 leave, God sends 100 to see why they left. Y'all hear me, friend? That's the way God is, friend. I'm telling you. Hey, we're talking about an outcry. I mean, he was saved. Repent you. He had, he had a consistency in his message. Yeah, man. He had confrontation in his message. It's amazing today. 
preacher get around an atmosphere like this, Dr. Treber preaching on holiness and, and, and standards and, and, and Christian dress, and they'll go home and say, hey, everybody ought to dress like a Christian. Woo! Hallelujah. But they ain't going to tell them what a Christian is supposed to dress like. Oh, that, amen. Everybody ought to look like a Christian. Woo! I busted high tonight. I told them, look, yeah, but, but why don't you trust your wife out and let them see how she's dressing? Amen. amen. I tell you, the preacher ain't preaching on a woman wearing britches. I tell you who ain't doing it. The preacher whose wife wears them everywhere. I said britches. Is everybody okay? I said britches. Is everybody all right? It's preaching time. Tell them I said so. It's preaching time, neighbor. Hey, man. Ain't nobody helping me. I need help, Brother Treber. Hey, I said, hey, a lady ought to look like a lady. And a man ought to look like a man. It's still right. It's still right. Preachers are soft. They wouldn't dare say that. If, well, if, you can't have brother so-and-so. You can't have brother Hudson because he'll get crazy on you. Here's what that liberal crowd said. He'll get stupid on you. You go to pull it up their Facebook page and see what their wife wears to the tomb of Jesus. I want to vomit. Is everybody okay with me? It's preaching time. Man up there with a pair of short britches on it. You don't go to the tomb of Jesus with a with a halter top, tank top. A, a man don't go up there with short britches on. Somebody's a God called man. Legs look like two toothpicks stuck in a sweet potato. Hey, look up in here. Hey, neighbor. When you go to the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ, you put on a three-piece suit. Hey, man, that's holy ground. Hey, she wears her church clothes. She wears her church clothes. She wears her church clothes. Hey, man, you don't wear no Hawaiian shirt up there to empty tomb. I need help over here. What's wrong with y'all? What's wrong with y'all? Soft. Soft. They're all soft. That's why it's quiet. Soft. That's what my daddy preached against. That's what Lester Roloff preached against. All they want to do is rub and polish the tombs. This old soft crowd, they polish the tombs of them dead preachers. Oh, we got his name on the building. We rub the tombs and polish the tombs. We brag on roll off. You wouldn't have roll off at your church with a coffee shop in the foyer. Got Starbucks in the foyer. That's blasphemy, Hoss. Somebody help me. When you go put your ashtrays in, I'd like to sell you some backer. Is everybody okay? Hey! Is everybody listening to me? So, I'm talking about they don't go soft. They ain't saying a blessed fire thing. People come, they don't know what a Christian is supposed to look like until the preacher identifies it. Yeah, I tell you how short your dress will be, how long, however long your preacher says to. He's the authority over you. He's the bishop. I tell you how short you will be, as short as that preacher says it ought to be. Yeah, hallelujah. I feel like saying a few things. Some of y'all look like you're going into some kind of coma. You might ought to call 911. We're going to lose a few in the operating room right here. I ain't saying nothing. I'll tell you what Jesus liked. He liked what he said. Hey, hey, Herod. You're shacking up over there, Herod. You're shacking up with your brother's wife. That's straight out of hell. That's unlawful. That's wicked. Name him sin. You just generalize sin. Everybody will have you on the platform. But when you go to cataloging it. Hey man, I feel good about it. Friend, listen, I've been run off a lot of places. Yeah, I feel real good about what I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Hey man, brother Tony, preach on. It don't matter if they go to public school, they still dress modest. I got three daughters that did. Yeah, is everybody okay? 
Hey, they still look like the Christian looks. Hey, they might even turn into the president of the student body. They might even be the second child to the state of Tennessee and get a full scholarship to be a music teacher. It may just have, hey, it ain't going to hurt them. It's good for a young man to bear the yoke in his youth. We got these little greenhouse Christians, got them pampered so. First little dry spell, they can't take it. What they going to do when they get a real job, hoss? Everybody can't work for a Christian. What's getting awful quiet now? Hey, praise God. I feel like saying a few things. I'm talking about the outcry. I was a confrontational outcry. And the outcry, I was a consistent outcry. The outcry was a corrective outcry. He said, make his ways straight. Give it to me straight. Well, I just don't like the way he preaches. It's not the way I'm preaching, ma'am, that's bothering you. It's what I'm preaching that's bothering you. Busting on them britches got you nervous, ma'am. That's what kinked you, ma'am. It's preaching time. Hey, hey, hey. I just don't like the way. It's not the way. It's not the delivery. It's the message. I could have said it quiet. You'd have still hated it. You could have read it in a book. You would have still disagreed with it. Consistency. This is what he said. Make it straight. Make his way straight. Don't send no crooked message. Well, I just tell you, I, it's a different time. And everything's, you know, it's different. Malachi 3, 6 said, I'm the Lord and I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Jesus Christ, the same. The same. Same John. That same John. We need some preachers, bless God, 10 years from now still stand on truth that their papas and their, grand, and their forefathers stood on. How firm a foundation ye saints of the Lord it is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say? You can tweak it all you want to. But I tell you why Jesus identified with John the Baptist. He gave some corrective message. Make it straight. I mean, y'all still preach against fornication. Churches having showers for girls, having kids out of wedlock. You sending a bad message. Making her a hero, letting her sing the choir next Sunday. Look up in here. Like, all I hear is, for, I, Lord, he mercy, forgiveness, mercy, forgiveness, mercy, grace. What about justice? What about judgment? You were being duped with all that. You're just so negative. You're, you're mean-spirited. He's mean-spirited. He's, he's, and that's always a soft preacher that calls a, calls a Bible preacher. Mean, he's mean-spirited. How do you preach judgment? Somewhere down the line, look at me. We know God loves everybody. How many believes that God loves everybody in hell? Raise your hand. I believe everybody in hell God loves. Would you raise your hand if you believe that? That's not a trick question. He believes he loves them all, but guess where? Somewhere down the line, his justice trumps his love. We got so soft in our churches, man. People do, they just think they're going to run down here to an altar. Y'all getting quiet on me. No accountability. No church discipline. Get, you, you get caught DUI at our church. Look, at, we're not going to put you in a little class somewhere. You're, going for, you're not going to get a little class and a little pep talk, and, you know, AA. You, you're going to get voted out. You're going to get brought for the church if you got guts enough. And we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going to access church discipline on a drunkard. It's, don't y'all look down at me. We're not supposed to walk with them. Hey, we're not supposed to fellowship with the walk disorderly. And then if they repent, ask the church to forgive them. It's preaching time. What y'all forgot about that? 
Y'all don't teach. Hey, what about that? We better get. Hey, somebody better start that class back up. Help me now. That's Bible. That's called. That's called church discipline. One on one. People don't just get divorces and go around flaunting it in the church, singing in the choir. I feel like saying a few things. I ain't never seen such. Just got the got the men haters class. That's their cell group, you know, on Sunday night. All the divorce went over there, talked about their husbands, running them down in front of their children. Amen. It's preaching time. Hey, 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 it's preaching time. There's such a thing as accountability. John the Baptist wasn't picking no banjo when he got his head cut off. He wasn't singing in the Southern Gospel Quartet. That man, he, he, he wasn't doing a little, do little jive dance up on the platform. He was identifying sin, calling it out, making it straight. If nobody ever conforms, a preacher ought to preach it straight anyway. If his own children turn and run, bless God, let them, let them turn and run and you stay and preach it anyway. If your wife hisses at you while she's out there, let her hiss, bless God, and preach on anyway. Amen. Amen. I was preaching like this not long ago. They told a fellow come to me, a lady at the service said, Sir, if you was my husband, I'd poison you. I said, if you was my wife, I'd drink a gallon of it, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. All that's introduction. I come to preach this one point. Y'all ready? He endorsed John the Baptist ministry because of his outreach. Out John in the wilderness where nobody else was. He endorsed him because of his outcry. But I believe our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ put the stamp of approval on the ministry of John the Baptist because of his outlook. He's down there baptizing. These people are coming. John's baptism is a baptism of repentance. They're saying, we need something. It wasn't saving them. They were saying, we're looking for something more. John, this fella, this, 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 this person this you're talking about that's coming after you, tell us more about him. We ain't, we, something's in, this Judaism's empty. We're, we're, not, we're not getting it. It's not happening. Something's wrong. We're, we're, we're not doing it. We need more than this. I got to have, I got to change my mind. And then while he's there, here comes some Pharisees and Sadducees. The Bible said, verse 7, when he saw, when he saw. I believe first thing he noticed in his perception of that crowd was he noticed their deception. They look religious. They're coming to the right place. Religious leaders, man. Sadducees, you know they don't believe in the resurrection. He's probably busting their hide. Bunch of Pharisees. But Brother Treber, they're at the right place. But when, when, when God's man, John the Baptist, saw him, he smelt something. He said, what he said in the originals right here is something ain't right. Let me tell y'all, if two Mormons walk in your back door with their little badges on and says elders, you better surround them with deacons as quick as you can. They ain't coming for help. I'm sure there's some Mormons in here that got saved, but them two, hey, them elders ain't coming for help. They're as reprobate as Obama is. Did I ain't mentioned Obama ever? Man, I felt something. Obama's straight out of hell. If you voted for Obama, there's room on the altar for you tonight. Hey, man. And I'm glad I said something about Obama. My people at home would have been disappointed. Watch me. They, hey, they, 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 they as reprobate as, as old Bruce Jenner is. They have reprobate, reprobate, reprobate as Michelle Obama is. Is everybody listening? We're living in today. 
where it seems like God's men are so deluded. I mean, everything's gotten blurred. They see no deception. Thank God for the spirit-filled wife. My wife, my wife does not have the gift of mercy because she's not the pastor. By the way, she don't have to have it. She can identify snakes in our church. She sits on the back like a hawk on a high wire. <laughs> Ain't never yet that she's identified. Ain't never yet, Andrew, she's identified a problem. Ain't never yet she's identified a problem. Say, they're going to hurt us sooner or later. I say, no, baby. They've come to, they want to help. They love my preaching. <laughs> they think I'm cool. I mean, no way, baby. They ain't no way. They're not, not, not them. Every time. Y'all listen. Preacher, y'all have to give the mercy. But it ought not take three or four years for you to find out who's real and who ain't. We got no, no discernment. He identified their deception. He identified their deficiencies. He says, man, what y'all come over here for, Pharisees? What'd you come? Who told you? Who warned you? Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring some fruits in, meat for repentance. They didn't have it. It's amazing to me the preachers of our day who will endorse somebody just because they're popular or because they got a personality. A lot of ministry within our circles right now is operating on talent and ain't got enough power to blow the fuzz off a peanut. They're running on talent. They've watched, the, they've watched him Gaithers enough. They've watched them Southern Quartets enough. They, they, they watched Old Crab Family enough. It's preaching time. They know how to. I didn't know singing was supposed to hurt. They go to sing and look like Joe Cocker or somebody. Is everybody okay? able to see through that stuff next time you, I'm going to be in your area I get 15 calls a week pastor I'm going to be in your area will not you you evangelists be better off quit inviting yourself to places are you okay look at me and tell make the preacher well you told me I ain't told you nothing I ain't never told nobody that somebody help me try to make me feel guilty I ain't told you that I invite who I want to invite when I want to invite them. I ain't, I ain't that crazy yet. Amen. Yeah, don't try to trick me into it. My wife don't like you anyway. Yeah, but I'm going to be in your area. Can't you smell something on that? Help me. Can't you see any of that? If you're called, God will give you a place to preach. Or you'll make you one. You ain't got to like this. You can lump this, hump, bump this. Hey, I said if you're called, God Almighty will make it when you can preach. You won't have to manipulate and politic. They said to Ronald Reagan, said, said politics is the oldest, second oldest Business in the history of humanity. There's only one before it. He said, yeah, and said politics has a whole lot of the same habits as the first one. Sell yourself for anything. I, I've never seen such a bunch of prostituting preachers. They're one thing somewhere and it's one thing. Why don't you do a little research on this guy you're having in? And find out what he looked like over there and what he sounded like over there in that crowd. Bunch of, amen, bunch of chameleons, bunch of, amen, friend. I tell you what Jesus like. He said, man, that dude, that John the Baptist, he knows what those Pharisees are. They ain't got the, by the way, they ain't got the goods. You can have talent and not have the Holy Ghost. 
There's a bunch of these young preachers come out of, I mean, they, 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 hey, their wives run over them. God help us. What we need is a revival of men in the pulpit. Most of these Bible colleges, if you turn a, a, a man eating lion loose, he'd starve himself to death. Somebody say, Amen. All I hear anymore is go ask your mama. At our church, man, church lets out. Teenagers are going to go to uh, Dairy Queen. We're going to go to Dairy Queen. Can we, can, Daddy, can I go? Well, is that boy that's in the back smells like cigarettes a lot and has got them earring holes that ain't grown back in yet? Does he still, is he going with y'all? Well, I don't know if he's going. Well, if he's going, you can't go. I don't want you going with him. I've seen the way he's been looking at you. I don't want you going with that boy that halfway long hair and got them old holes that ain't grown over yet. Hey, he be, ain't no boy going to date my daughter till the holes grow over. Somebody say amen. And then I'm going to give him a drug test right there when he comes in and say, take this cup and go in the bathroom and bring it back. Head right there, right then. It's preaching time. Amen, friend. Now go ask your mama. Go ask. I said a preacher's preacher revival, and he's showing me his house, showing me, showing me, showing me his house. But but he never did invite me in. And we'd been to the restaurant and drinking coffee. And, co and we said, I said, look, I need to run in the house a minute. You don't see a man about a pair of mules. And, and he said, oh no, man, you can't go in the house. Man, my wife will kill me. Sir, pastor, if your house is so nasty that the guest advances can't go in and flush the toilet, look at me. Hey, you got a problem at home, sir. I said, you got a problem at home, sir. A preacher's wife's house ought to be clean enough to eat off the floor. A preacher's wife's house ought to be clean enough to eat off the floor any given minute. A preacher's wife's house ought to be clean enough to eat off the floor. Amen. 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 Y'all getting quiet. We need a revival of men. Go ask your mom. God's men need to be able to see some stuff. The outlook, deficiency, deception. Let me say this. The outlook, we ought to be to identify the diabolic. Watch me just a minute. I don't care how religious they cloak it. There's only two forces in the world. God and Satan. Here's what I'm hearing. Well, at least they go to church. No, no, if it don't say church on the sign, it probably ain't one. Outreach, Oasis, Fellowship, Ecclesia, Outreach, On the Rock. That don't sound like independent, fundamental, premillennial, missionary, King James only, slobber slinging, sweat wiping, high blood pressure, bug eyed, gravy sopping, biscuit eating, no Sunday school literature, Baptist church. It don't sound the same. You ought to be able to, to sense that. You know what blaspheming the Holy Ghost is? It's accrediting the work of God to the devil. This is what they said. He cast out those devils by the power of Beelzebub. That text, I didn't, they blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Christian rock. Come on. You don't tie a Christian with rock. If I want rock, just don't give me some sugar-coated rock and roll wannabes. Couldn't make it in Nashville. So they go to the, you know, the PTL club. Help me now. If I want rock, just give me Skinner and Almond Brothers. Somebody say, give me the real thing. That's better than some of his Christian music anyway. Help me now. I mean, Sweet Home Alabama ought to be in the hymnal. Somebody say amen. <laughs> amen, praise God. You know, glued in in the back somewhere. 
Is everybody listening? Hey, is everybody okay? We can't see anything wrong with anything. Nothing's wrong anymore. Preacher, nothing's wrong. And I, I, a preacher goes preaching strong like tonight. Man, he's against everything. He's against everybody. He's against everything. This old boy from Murfreesboro, he was an ex-boxer. He's a boxer. I won't tell you his name, but he, he got sorry. He, would, he got to drinking. He drank all drank like a fish. And I mean, he had a reputation. He's, I mean, he was champion. And he got to drink and drink. He'd miss his appointments, miss, miss matches for being drunk. Running around on his wife, mistreating his kids. Old Johnny Falk, y'all know Johnny travels with me some. Old country Johnny Falk. His, his, his granny was in the kitchen one morning. They was all running that, that man down, just giving him down the road. He's sorry as car. Said he cheats on his wife. Said he's a drunk. Said he's running around here, canceling fights. And he's be sorry. I mean, they just kept on. Said, you know, he owes everybody in town. Said he'd been in jail five or six times this month. Said, what do you think, Granny? Old Granny Falk said, well, he can whistle good. <laughs> Man, I go to preaching against these modern bunch of, bunch of these borderline young preachers that's trying to play. By the way, a double-minded man's unstable in all his ways. Can't decide what he wants. I don't want to be put in a box. I don't want to be labeled. I want to be labeled old timer. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And you shall find rest for your soul. Label me old timey. Branded. Brand me old timey. I don't want to be branded. I don't want to be labeled. <laughs> yeah, you're soft. You're soft, boss. You're probably going to vote for Rubio. Is everybody okay? You're soft. Amen. Amen. Everybody all right? Yes, You're soft. <laughs> Jesus said, I like that John the Baptist. I think I'll join that church. I'm going to go down there and get baptized. And it wasn't just Jesus. Go back to our text. Bible tells us there in verse 15, Jesus answered and said unto him, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, he allowed him, he was baptized. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending. I mean, the Holy Ghost liked it. I just don't, I, you, you, quench, you, you just quench your spirit with that hard preaching. Uh, the Holy Ghost liked this preaching. He, he, came, he, came, he came to John's together. And about that time said, a lower voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Not only did Jesus put his endorsement on hard preaching, Naming sin, calling out, calling out the diabolic. But the Holy Ghost put his endorsement on him. Man, I feel good now. <laughs> and then God the Father put his endorsement on him. Or you can have that other crowd that likes you. And you can have that big entourage that follows you and makes good, pretty statements on YouTube under your videos. And you can build a crowd, not build a church. But I want to preach. And when I'm preaching, I want Jesus to like it. Ooh. And I want the Holy Ghost to, to endorse it. When it's all said and done, I want God the Father to say, I'm pleased. I like this. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Is that what we really want?